In 1962, Mali made a significant step forward in Francophone Africa by introducing its own currency, the Malian franc, breaking away from the CFA franc. This decision represented a bold step toward achieving financial independence. However, internal divisions within Mali, as well as France's staunch opposition to granting complete autonomy to its former colonies, resulted in the abandonment of the Mali and Franc, with Mali eventually joining the CFA zone in 1984. This historical episode highlights the complex dynamics of currency sovereignty in post-colonial Africa, as well as the long-term influence of former colonial powers on economic policies and decisions. The military juntas of Niger and Burkina Faso's recent announcements of their withdrawal from the cause bloc and intention to establish a single regional currency mark a significant departure from the status quo. This bold move signals a renewed push for financial autonomy and regional integration among West African Francophone nations. While the creation of a unified currency presents both opportunities and challenges, it reflects these countries' growing desire to assert their economic sovereignty and strengthen ties in order to drive long-term development and prosperity in the region. As these countries grapple with the complexities of currency reform and regional cooperation, their actions could have far-reaching consequences for Africa's overall economic integration and governance landscape. According to President Troer, it is more than just the currency. Anything that keeps us in slavery will break the bonds. Abdurrahmani Tani, the head of Niger's Chunta, expressed similar sentiments during an interview on state television, saying that abandoning the CFA franc would be a sign of sovereignty and a necessary step toward independence from French colonialism. General Tiani went on to say that money is a symbol of sovereignty, and we are in the process of regaining total sovereignty. Our states are no longer the cash cows of France. France has robbed us of over 107 years. We must collaborate to identify the mechanisms that will enable us to strengthen exchanges within our alliance. This is a bold move, and as previously stated, it is the first time since Mali abandoned its currency that any Francophone country has decided to consider and make plans to abandon the CFA franc. Unlike other African politicians, who are famous for saying things but never acting on them, the military juntas of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso are known for doing what they say. Even though it was recently revealed that the idea of creating a common currency was in the works long before they decided to withdraw from the regional bloc, the Kawas. In November of the same year, the three states' finance ministers issued a joint statement recommending the formation of an expert committee to study the issues of economic and monetary union. This was a historic initiative to re-establish their monetary sovereignty through the creation of a common currency known as Sahel. As you can see, the concept of creating a common currency is not false. Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso are entirely serious about it. Since Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso made their announcement to the world, there have been heated debates about the implications of this decision. Some experts have warned that dumping the CFA franc is a bad idea that will be risky and complicated because the CFA franc, a currency pegged to the euro, appears to provide macroeconomic stability to every francophone country that uses it. But is this actually true? On December 26, 1945, General de Gaulle issued a decree that officially established the CFA franc. It is a colonial currency created by France in order to promote economic integration among the colonies under its administration, and thus gain control of their resources, economic structures, and political systems. This currency is currently used by Benin, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Niger, Senegal, and Togo in West Africa, as well as Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Congo Brazzaville, Equatorial Guinea, and Gabon in Central Africa. According to the monetary accords between African nations and France, the CFA franc is pegged to the euro, and the central banks of West and Central African states must deposit 50% of their foreign exchange reserves in a special French treasury operating account. Now supporters of the currency praise its credibility and stability, noting that no CFA member has experienced a major financial crisis. This may be true, but African countries are paying a high price for the currency's supposed stability.
Consider the fact that every CFA member country is required to deposit at least 50% of its foreign exchange reserves, which are currently around 10 billion euros, in a special account at the French Treasury. In exchange, France guarantees the unlimited convertibility of CFA francs into euros. But does this make sense? Why would an independent country be required to deposit half of its foreign reserves in the bank of another country? Chakna Bunajim Sai, a Malian economist, says it makes no economic sense. And, in our opinion, it is simply a way for France to maintain control over its former colonies. Another effect of using the CFA franc is to artificially raise the price of African goods. CFA countries, unlike other African countries, are unable to influence their own economies through currency rates. They do not control their currency, so if they want to devalue it to increase exports, they must wait for France to do so. And because the CFA franc is linked to the strong euro, their prices are inevitably higher. This not only reduces their economy's competitiveness, but also benefits imports from countries with weak currencies, such as China. The import of finished products in turn limits the industrialization of CFAs on members and makes them more dependent than they already are on exporting raw commodities. So, who really benefits from the CFA franc? Defenders of the CFA franc claim that the use of the currency in Francophone Africa has made the inflation rate in this region to be low compared to other places in Africa. This may be true, but the result of this so-called low inflation is a weak economy and the creation of fewer jobs. The reason for this is that the currency's stability attracts foreign investors while stifling domestic production. To put it simply, the CFA franc is a good currency only for those who benefit from it. Specifically, major French and international corporations, executives of the zone's central banks, elates seeking to repatriate wealth acquired legally or illegally, and heads of state unwilling to upset France. This is why the revolutionary governments of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have declared that the colonial fiscal agreements signed decades ago with France will be terminated in the coming months of 2024. However, establishing a common currency entails more than simply printing new banknotes. Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso will have to establish a new central bank to manage the delicate transition away from the CFA franc, formulate monetary policy, and decide what to do with more than $4.6 billion in outstanding CFA-denominated regional bonds. Burkina Faso has more than 1.2 trillion CFA francs in outstanding bonds. Mali has slightly more than a trillion CFA francs, compared to Niger's 498 billion. According to one expert, leaving the CFA zone could cause turmoil and uncertainty, potentially cutting the three states off from future financing from regional and international capital markets. The uncertainty may also result in capital flight and an immediate depreciation of a new currency. Imports could become prohibitively expensive, accelerating inflation. Given the risks involved in creating the new currency, the middle military juntas are taking the currency issue more seriously than their Ikawa's withdrawal. Certainly, many things will need to be put in place before the currency can be implemented. However, the fact that this issue is being discussed and included on the agenda is mind-blowing. Since the military juntas of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger took power, they have gone from kicking France out of their countries, denouncing Western pressures, and withdrawing from the cause bloc. These countries have consistently demonstrated that they prioritize their sovereignty over all else. And now that they are planning to create a common currency, if they succeed, these African leaders will be remembered as those who defied Western pressure to grant their countries monetary freedom. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.